I love vests, and I really hope that vests feel the same way about me. Honestly, though, a vest is really an incredible thing, and I'm surprised that more guys don't wear them. You know, they really add a lot of utility. There's way more, that, more utility than just a shirt, and they really turn a lot of your jackets into winter jackets. For example, my Himmel Brothers leather jacket. You know, it has a thin wool lining on the inside, and it's good down to like 45 degrees, but bef you know, beyond that, it gets really, really, really cold. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll layer up a wool vest underneath it and it turns it into a much warmer jacket. So it extends the life out of the uh, wardrobe that you already have. Now, of course, there's a lot of junk out there. And when it comes down to it, what you want is a good wool vest, especially if you're looking for insulation. Now, of course, there's, there's down vests and those are nice too, but hard to work in those. A lot of times they're a shell and it gets, you know, um, ripped easily. Wool, on the other hand, has so many wonderful properties to it that it's just kind of a no-brainer. So, where do you go? In my opinion, when it comes to wool vests, there's really no better place than Filson. Now, I know, I know, I've been overly critical of Filson in the past, and okay, fine, fair enough. But I've always maintained that their Mackinac wool, their rugged twill especially, but by and large, most of their luggage are solid bets. A lot of their other stuff is overpriced, but when it comes to those items, I still think that they are a solid buy. And this, this Mackinac vest, it's no different. The vest is made from their legendary 24 ounce Mackinac wool produced for them by Pendleton Woolen Mills. Now, if you've never experienced this material for yourself, it's very much what old wool products feel like. Somewhat scratchy, thick, and warm as hell. Besides being an excellent insulator, wool has a number of other great qualities like being naturally fire resistant, keeping you warm even when it's wet, and superior durability. Wool fibers can be bent over 20,000 times before breaking, far more than its cotton variant. So all those qualities make it perfect for workwear. The pocket layout is simple and thoughtful with two hand warmer pockets and two chest pockets, one of which is subdivided with spaces for writing instruments or small tools. A button closure keeps things simple and is a much better option than a zipper in many ways, since you can easily sew on a button if one pops off, but it's very difficult to repair a zipper. Of course, this does come with its downsides. They get caught on things much easier, so it's kind of a double-edged sword. The fit is roomy, but not overly so, especially since most people will likely wear this over a heavier shirt like flannel or denim. But I think the addition of a cinch in the back or on the sides would still be beneficial. I mean, really, could you imagine this thing with some of that Filson bridal leather and their brass buckles on it? In my opinion, that would make this vest way more usable and also elevate this style considerably. Speaking of style, if you want a Western flair, Filson also has a Western cut of this vest. Same wool, same build quality, but with a pointed hem and a nice looking lapel. In fact, you can see Wrangler Star use these quite a bit in his videos, and he's not gentle on them either. This thing can take a beating. Now, the only problem with the Western model, though, is that it doesn't appear to come in many colors, and it's often unavailable through the Filson website. Still, if you have a look around the net, you can find places like Backcountry where they could be found pretty easily. But is it worth it? That's the real question. At $150, this vest is likely what most people would rather spend on a full jacket. But I can tell you this. I have my father's old Filson Mackinac Cruiser, which is made of the same type of wool, just different pattern. And it looks almost brand new. Now this thing's gotta be 30, maybe 40 years old, but it looks almost brand new. This stuff is almost impervious to wear. You simply can't do anything to it. And if you do, you can get it repaired and it looks even cooler in my opinion, but still $150. I think it's absolutely worth it, especially considering that you may have this the rest of your life and, or pass it down to your kids or maybe a niece or nephew or something like that. Are we still allowed to say that? The other thing to consider is what they call cost per wear. Now, what you do here, if you haven't heard of this concept before, is you basically take the price of a garment and then you divide it up as, as many times as you would wear it. So this is $150. And I can tell you that I wear this thing a ton. I wear it in the fall, I wear it in the winter, I wear it in the spring, and that's quite a bit on its own. But the other thing that I mentioned earlier is that I tend to wear this a lot underneath other jackets. So I wear it probably more than I would normally just because it's an insulating layer. So for me, over the last three years that I've owned this thing, I've definitely gotten it down to, you know, a quarter per wear or something like that. But I can guarantee you by the time I'm finished, 
I will have this thing at pennies per wear. And that's just the nature of uh, the Filson Mackinac wool. It's really incredible stuff. So cost per wear is very, very important. Now at $150, I think it's important to look at some competitive options. And even if you don't go with a Filson, right? You go with something different. I just think that the, the utility and the usability of a good wool vest is absolutely worth it. So I wanna show you three different options that you can consider. First off is the most direct competition from a brand called Stormy Cromer. This vest shares a lot of the same design cues as the Filson, but uses a slightly thicker 26 ounce wool and has an additional chest pocket. This vest is also available in a Western version, so if you can't find the Filson model, this is a very comparable alternative at approximately the same price. LL Bean's main guide vest is an interesting model using a solid brass zipper instead of buttons and an 85% wool, 15% nylon blend with a 100% cotton lining. Its design is a little bit different with flapped chest pockets and a drop tail hem, but may be a more usable option for you depending on what your needs are. And it's also the exact same price at $150. Then there's the Orvis Trapper Peak Wool Vest. It doesn't appear to have any hand warmer pockets, but it opts instead for a symmetrical four pocket design. Unfortunately though, not much more is available as far as information on the weight or the blend of the wool, but it's a similar looking wool vest at the exact same price of $150. Now I know I said three options, but I wanna throw a bonus in here. Finally, we have the lesser known brand, Ghostwear with their big bill vest. And at $103, it's the cheapest of the bunch. And it's actually made from a very similar 24 ounce wool blend of 80% wool, 20% nylon. And other than being made in Canada, this is a very similar layout to the Filson for about 50 bucks less. So the Filson Mackinac wool vest definitely gets a big green light from me. And if this one isn't quite your bag, well, maybe one of the other options is. Now, you know, to be honest with you, I, I like the fact that Filson uses the old world styling. You know, their Mackinac Cruiser basically hasn't changed very much since they, they brought it onto the market. But I do wish they would kind of update this Mackinac wool line. And they tried doing that a little bit with the Alaskan fit and changing the, the cuts of them. But... You know, like I mentioned earlier, if they added a couple things like maybe some leather um, in usable places to keep this still functional and still workwear, which is what it was intended for originally, but they just updated it a little bit or just added a couple of models, keep the originals, add to that collection. I think that building on the things that are Filson's strengths would be a smart move instead of what they seem to be doing, which is making some really odd choices in their products. Now, again, Filson isn't what Filson used to be. But I do feel that these Mackinac wool products still earn their old tagline, might as well have the best. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about this vest, Filson in general, or other vests that are maybe better than this one. Maybe there's something I don't even know of yet. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you later.